Dominicans to prepare to vote even as the opposition calls for outside intervention. Our top story in Caribbean Newsline for Thursday, December 5th, 2019. I'm Ricardo Roberts. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. After an election campaign that has been marred by protests, Dominicans will vote on Friday. Now the polls are taking place amid allegations from the opposition United Workers' Party, the UWP, that the vote will be neither free nor fair. But Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt, who is seeking a fifth consecutive victory for his Dominica Labour Party, the DLP, and a fourth straight term as the country's leader is confident he will be victorious. And uh, of course, CMC's Peter Richards is on the ground in Roseau and is expected to give a comprehensive report on that story. Uh, meantime, Prime Minister Skerritt reported Wednesday night that several cruise ships have stopped coming to the island as a result of the pre-election unrest. He said all cruise ships call or cruise ship calls have been called off or canceled immediately. And of course, stressing that the actions of the UWP supporters were impacting the livelihoods of those who depend on the tourism sector uh, and the island's economy overall, Skerritt said, the country will have a huge task of rebuilding its reputation after the polls. Of course, we go back to our top story uh, where Dominicans are being uh, preparing themselves for tomorrow's general election. Dominicans go to the polls on Friday to elect a new government with the two main contenders expressing different opinions on the likely outcome. Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt, who is leading his Dominica Labour Party into the election, is predicting a landslide victory. We, we are very confident that the Dominica Labour Party is going to win on December 6th. And we are going to have a landslide victory in Dominica. The people are with us, the voting people are with us, the momentum is with us. We have the best, better policies, the better programs, the better strategy for Dominica development. But Lennox Linton, his main challenger for the job, is somewhat cautious, saying that victory for the United Workers' Party could be achieved against all odds. We are in an, an election that is neither free nor fair, but an election in which we are contesting against huge odds, hoping to upset the apple cart. The polls are taking place amid some level of protest in two of the strongholds of the opposition party. And during the early hours of Thursday, police used tear gas in the northern village of Salisbury as the authorities moved to unblock public roads where tires and other debris had been set ablaze. On Wednesday night, in a nationwide radio broadcast, Prime Minister Skerritt said the election would take place on Friday as scheduled and that voters would not be intimidated. General elections will be held in the Commonwealth of Dominica on Friday, the 6th of December, 2019. Let us be very, very clear about this. Let us be clear also that the intimidation of voters and other law-abiding citizens in this country will stop in the prelude to voting. I will not have lawless persons attempt to frustrate decent voters on their way to the polls or destroy the democratic process in Dominica. But Linton has defended the actions of what he termed the young people in the two villages and is further appealing to the United States to intervene in the electoral process. He is claiming that Prime Minister Skerritt had asked the Caribbean Community CARICOM to send military personnel to Dominica to help maintain law and order. The people of Dominica need help. The people of Dominica have been abandoned by their Prime Minister who wants to own and control them for his own dictatorial benefit. The people of Dominica have been abandoned by their President 
the police doesn't work for the people of Dominica, it works for the Prime Minister. The Independent Electoral Commission is not there to do the work of the people. The courts don't seem to be there to do the work of the people. The people of Dominica need help. Now the Prime Minister, who has so, was so brutally oppressed the people in their bid for electoral reform, is getting the support of fellow leaders of Caracol to send in soldiers and police officers to intimidate them because they stood up for free and fair elections. Every other CARICOM country is voting by the guys. And because the people of Dominica are asking for that, and Roosevelt Scared is refusing, CARICOM is sending troops into Dominica to help scare it in his oppression of the people of Dominica. So we need help. The private sector has expressed some level of concern at the political climate leading into the elections. Kenny Green is the president of the Dominica Association of Industry and Commerce. The effect obviously is, 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 is jittery. Um, the, 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 the business sector is jittery. Um, they are concerned um, primarily because the thoughts uh, of anarchy and chaos, um, especially after what happened post-Maria, uh, have lingered. Um, however, we see that there is an opportunity through the process to settle the nation. Um, and hopefully that is what will happen after the elections, that the, the electoral process will settle the nation and that we can resume um, doing business within a semblance of, of peace and normality. Earlier this week, the protesters in Marigot launched a verbal attack on the Bishop of Rosa, Gabriel Malzair, and Cardinal Kelvin Felix. The Vicar General, William John Lewis, has expressed the church's disappointment. Well, I think it's unfortunate that um, the general feeling is that somehow the church um, may not have spoken enough in terms of teaching the people. Oh, I don't agree with that. I think indeed the church has spoken on numerous occasions. The question is, has anybody been listening? And has anybody been um, understanding what the church is saying? Again, as I say, it's unfortunate because it's what is perceived, whether it's real or perceived, you have to address it. And um, yes, the church has been drawn into the politics, but the church has always been in politics in the sense that the church has always felt responsible to teach the people, whether it's in terms of the social life, whether in terms of, 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 of health care or whatever it is. And certainly policy is very much part of the people's lives and therefore the church cannot be removed from it. A number of regional and international organizations are in Dominica to monitor the polls, including the Organization of American States, the OAS, whose team is led by the former Bahamas Prime Minister, Hubert Ingram. And we're here on an observer mission for the Organization of American States, <clears throat> and we've had meetings with a number of persons, the Prime Minister, the President, the leader of the opposition, the Commissioner of Police, um, Registrar uh, um, General and others, and uh, we are gathering information to observe the elections tomorrow and the day after we will make a public statement on Saturday afternoon um, as a preliminary statement and uh, we prepare a report and all of which will be made public. Are you concerned about the acts of violence in the country? Um, yes, we were concerned about it, and that's why we sought assurances from the Commissioner and from the Leader of the Opposition and from the government um, that they are taking the appropriate steps to ensure that uh, the elections are not affected by any violence tomorrow. The polls will open at 7 o'clock in the morning and close 10 hours later. For CMC News, I am Peter Richards in Roseau, Dominica. And of course, we told you that Prime Minister Skerritt reported Wednesday night that several cruise ships have stopped coming to the island as a result of the pre-election unrest. He said all cruise ship calls have been cancelled immediately. Services shall remain in effect until after the general election period when, hopefully, this madness would have subsided and we would have been to an end to this unwarranted blotch on our otherwise pristine, pristine record of peace, safety, and tranquility. This is a sad, sorry day in the rebuilt efforts of this country. The lawlessness and irresponsibility of a thoughtless few 
will now jeopardize the social and economic well-being of all. Now, stressing that the actions of the UWP supporters were impacting the livelihoods of those who depend on the tourism sector and the island's economy overall, Skerritt said the country will have a huge task of rebuilding its reputation after the polls. Dominica must now rebuild relations with the outside world. Dominica has to repackage and remarket itself as a safe, peaceful, and fun-loving place to visit and relax or do business. This will not be an easy task at all. The winter season has already started. Given these present occurrences, it may now very well be a bleak one for Dominica. I am deeply concerned about the short and medium term impact of this lawlessness and hooliganism on safety and on the social and economic fabric of our society. And ahead in Caribbean news line, the Bahamas is blacklisted by France and the government is not happy. The details after the break. Stay with us. Dixon and you're watching Finding Fit, the show where I pair up one client with two trainers. Trainer number one. Oh my gosh. It's about fitness, comedy. You know, I can do this all day, you know. Drama. Um, in the future, we cannot be late. Inspirational stories and so much <gasps> more. You are going to love it. You can catch Finding Fit prime time this fall on Care Vision. Don't stop, I'm gonna kill you. I ain't getting pop. You talking about you happy. You talking about you king. And the only thing you king is how you send it there. You ain't body. I this me on your brain fly. You may not, you may say, me catch you play. That me know with your friend. Them kill you and gunshot or bend them like a cure. Really. As usual, Spartan King is confident already in the arena. So his style and the way he brings off his lyrics is flawless. Bahamas Finance Minister and Deputy Prime Minister Peter Turnquest has expressed disgust over France's decision to put the Bahamas on its blacklist of tax havens for lack of cooperation. He confirmed in Parliament on Wednesday that France had formally notified the Dr. Hubert Minister Administration of its decision earlier in the day, and he labeled it surreptitious and an affront to the international diplomatic norms and the relationship the Bahamas had sought to build with France. Now, Turnquest said the Bahamas' inclusion on France's list of countries deemed non-cooperative in the fight against tax-related crimes stemmed from the perception by French authorities that the Caribbean nation has not been responding to requests for information in a manner that is satisfactory to them. But the finance minister said an intergovernmental investigation had not turned up any French tax information requests that remained outstanding or had not been dealt with. More in this Eyewitness News report. Deputy Prime Minister Peter Turnquist defending the country's position following the recent backlisting by the French. According to Turnquist, it was due to government's inability to engage with the international community at the highest level. He said the Bahamas has consistently made amendments to legislation to ensure compliance and believes that the Bahamas has been duped once again. There is a dispute mechanism that countries can avail themselves of if they feel that a country is not being cooperative. The Bahamas has gone through significant pains to pass 
a suite of legislation, much to the disdain of the industry, that has made us uncompetitive in some regards. He said he recently met with French officials and no indication was made of their plans to blacklist the country, taking the Bahamas by surprise. At least engage with the state at the highest level, that is with the competent authority, the Minister of Finance, or if that is insufficient with the Prime Minister of the country, they proceed in a less than transparent manner to damage the reputation of the Bahamas by placing it on a list. Opposition leader Philip Davis agreed, noting that repeated attempts by successive governments to satisfy the international community have failed. And ahead in Newsline Sport, Ireland names its 14th man squad, or its 14th man squad, rather for the limited overs series tour of the Caribbean next year. Stay with us. Sport is next. We've got a huge fan base. They're, they're all into the off-road racers, and a lot of the people that I race against also race in the, in the Baja racing, so it's a very easy transition. And um, you know, we worked on this, this barrel roll, this basically taking a Baja-style truck and spinning it in the air, 4,500-pound truck, spinning it in the air and landing it on the ground. Nobody's ever done that before. Yeah, we worked on that for four years, and we decided to roll it out down at Ensenada, and uh, it was really well-received. Ireland's coach Graham Ford has underscored the importance of quick acclimatization after selectors on Thursday announced a 14-man squads for the limited overs tour of the Caribbean next month. The One Day and T20 international squads described by Ford as a blend of experience and youth will be led for the first time by stroke maker Andrew uh, Balburney who last month replaced the long-serving William Potterfield as test and one-day skipper and now has uh, taken over from Gary Wilson as T20 captain. Now with only one warm-up match before the six-match series against West Indies, Ford said his side needed to hit the ground running. Ireland clashed with West Indies in an ODI doubleheader at the Kingston Oval in Barbados on January 7th and again two days later before playing the finale in Grenada on January 12th. Grenada's National Stadium will also host the opening T20 International on January 15th before the series concludes at Warner Parks and Kits with a weekend doubleheader on January 18th and 19th. Now overall, Ireland have beaten West Indies only once in 10 one-day meetings, losing seven. Still in cricket now, for the first time in 11 years, Jamaica's Trelawney Stadium will host the West Indies four-day championship. Cricket West Indies said in a statement on Thursday that it has scheduled the fifth round match between Jamaica Scorpions and Leeward Islands Hurricanes at the venue from February 13th to 16th next year, along with the sixth round match between the Scorpions and Guyana Jaguars from February 27th to March 1st. 
The last time a first-class match was played at Trelawney was in 2009. Cricket director of West Indies, Jim, or, or cricket director, Jimmy Adams, said the stadium is scheduled to stage a T20 international in two years' time, and this is part of the process to get the ground in shape. Adam said he was excited about the forthcoming West Indies Championship season and working with the new West Indies Senior Selection Panel under Chairman Roger Harper to identify the next wave of players to stake their claim for the West Indies Test squad. Guyana Jaguars are the five-time defending champions of the competition. They opened the tournament on the road when they traveled to Antigua to face Leeward Islands Hurricanes at the Vivian Richards Cricket Ground in a day-night contest played with a pink ball. And the University of the West Indies has signed a memorandum of understanding with the Jamaica Cricket Association that the parties say will contribute to cricket development in the island. Now, according to an article in the Jamaica Gleaner newspaper, UE has committed to providing priority medical support for players contracted to the JCA and to oversee sports science research to help improve player output for the next three years. That research aims to focus on fitness, physiotherapy and strength, and conditioning patterns to reduce risk of injury as well as player fatigue. The UE Faculty of, Faculty of Sport is also expected to explore the application of scientific approaches to preparing teams. Now, on the JCA side of the deal, they will engage partners in rehabilitating and developing the university's Muna campus facilities, particularly pitches, an installation of physical infrastructure so they meet the first class cricket standards approved by Cricket West Indies. And staying in Jamaica, Reggae Boys team manager Roy Simpson is sending a strong message to overseas based players. If they want to represent the country in the T20 World Cup, they need to play better in leagues other than football leagues in the United States. And as we hear also in this report by TVJ Simon Preston, Simpson appeared baffled by a striker's about turn in playing for Jamaica. I've never been there. Okay. Oh, we've got family. I've got family that live there, but I've never. It's never interested me. Really? I'm yeah. a. I'm a kind of guy that. Why am I going to go there and play football? and represent a country that I've never been to. That was Watford FC striker Troy Deeney speaking on the Poet and Vooj podcast recently about why he turned down a national call-up twice. Deeney is eligible to play for Jamaica through his father, but has maintained that the reggae boys are not part of his plans. This to the surprise of team manager Roy Simpson. I don't know with Troy, at one point you get the feeling that he wants to play for Jamaica and then the next point he says he wants to play and he will donate everything that he plays to, to, to the Jamaican people. It's a personal thing with him. Um, he has to decide. We're not sitting down and waiting on anybody. Our program will not stop until Mr. Dini or anybody at all decides that it is the right time. Simpson provided an update on Sheffield United's Ravel Morrison and Preston North End's Daniel Johnson. Two players, he says, are committed to the national program. He said he was ready for November. But when he reached out to us and said he was ready, it was, you know, past certain deadlines with regards to the two games um, and the CNA. He understood that, but he, he did indicate to us that if there are any changes or in terms of injury or anything, you know, he would have made himself available. That didn't happen. Daniel Johnson, uh, he had an issue when we invited him previously with regards to travel arrangements. I think that has been sorted out. It is just left to him now to say to us when he's ready. We're always willing to give him that opportunity. Currently, there are 21 Jamaican footballers playing in the United Soccer League, the second tier in the United States. But Simpson says they will need to impress or move to a higher league in order to be part of the squad for the World Cup qualifiers in August. We're concerned because we believe that our players too have to understand that if we're going to be world beaters and, and world competitors, the USL really not going to cut it. Though, because I personally believe that the USL is not as good as our Premier League. They are better in terms of infrastructure and finances, but I think in terms of the quality that we have here, the USL is not as good. But it is an avenue, an opportunity for our players. But what we want is that our players to understand that use that avenue to get to the MLS and then to Europe.
Outside of England, in Europe, Jamaica has representation in Germany, Belgium, Turkey, Norway, Ireland, Finland and Austria. And Jamaican striker Jamil Matt was on target as Newport County beat Brighton and Hove Albion under 21s 5-4 in a penalty shootout to advance to the third round of the English Football League trophy following a nil-all draw at the Amex Stadium this week. Matt scored with a right foot shot to the top right corner and teammates Christian Abrahams, Ryan Haynes and Taylor Maloney and George Nurse were also successful with their spot kicks but manager Michael Flynn bemoaned his side's poor finishing. Newport missed a host of chances to win the game in normal time and Flynn was frustrated his side had to rely on a shootout to advance. Matt has struggled this season, scoring only twice after netting 20, game, 20 times in his first season at the League 2 outfit last term when they narrowly missed promotion. That's for sports. Stay with us. We'll be right back. All, I mean, all, all, all meaningful, substantive, philosophical education is valuable to us. Whether it is Asian, whether it is European, whether it is African, it is extremely important. One must examine, uh, uh, like CLR did, all avenues of thought. Uh, now, one must have a certain integrity with regard to the things that you do believe in and, and work with. Advancing our development agenda through innovation, industry and investment. That was the theme for the Tobago Economic and Business Outlook Conference 2019. This year's conference examined solutions for some of Tobago's most pressing economic challenges and provided an update on the island's development agenda. We chose this theme because we firmly believe that innovation, investment and industry integral to advancing our island's development. As a small business owner, you have to make sure your technology is available and operational at all times. But what happens when your network crashes, your email goes down, or your user systems get a virus? You may try to fix the issue yourself, but you can end up making the problem a lot worse. At Digital Networking Solutions, we're more than just people who try to fix your computers. We monitor, maintain, and support your IT systems so that you can focus on growing your business to its fullest potential. When you sign up for one of our IT support plans, we get familiar with your IT environment beforehand, so we can manage it proactively as if it were our own. Your business deserves the best IT services available to ensure it functions to its maximum efficiency. So give us a try today, email or call us, and we will give you a free network assessment to determine whether now is the time for your small business to adopt digital networking solutions for a smoother, more reliable network experience. That's Caribbean Newsline for news on sports round the clock. Subscribe to carnalnews.com for more for our programming. Log on to caribbean.tv and check out our YouTube channel. But before we go, we want to invite you to be part of our Caribbean Christmas by telling us what Christmas means to you. Send us a video or audio message to Caribbean Christmas at Caribvision. Don't forget to include your name and the city you live in. We'll share your special message on Caribvision throughout the month of December. We look forward to hearing from you. From all of us at CMC News, thank you for watching. Have yourselves a good night.